Hi, good morning or good afternoon, whichever time of the day you're choosing to watch this. I hope you are all well. For those of you that don't know me, I am Mackenzie Fisher. We're fairly new in the ward. We've been here um, about six months, so I guess if you weren't or never met me before this whole coronavirus, then you probably don't know who I am. So, uh, Lindsay, our sister Walker, asked me to give a little short lesson today, and I chose to um, review and talk about the talk from conference by uh, Elder Ricardo P. Jimenez, and the title of the talk is Finding Refuge from the Storms of Life. I thought that was fitting for um, just what's going on in the world these days. Um, we're definitely, I think, in the midst of a storm. I think that's a pretty fitting title. Um, for what's going on. I hope everyone is well. Um, I, I think I would be safe saying that whether or not anyone is struggling in a big way at this moment, I would I would probably say that you at least know someone um, that you are close to, or maybe a child or um, a spouse or parents or siblings that have faced some hardship during this uh, pandemic so um, this was such a really uh, this talk especially just stood out to me in conference um, I just remember it um, pretty vividly that it just really you know spoke to my soul and so that's why I chose it so um, he starts off by telling a story when he was in the fire department in Santiago and he was working on New Year's Eve which I'm sure most of you know that firefighters would be very busy on New Year's Eve with all the fireworks, especially in you know an area like this, and, and um, it was for sure in his area. And he, he recounts the story of around mid, midnight getting a call that there was some trouble somewhere, and he, he remembers driving through the streets and just seeing all the people um, happily enjoying their family and their fireworks, but recalling that it was strange that they were headed to emergency, that there could be both um, kind of realities taking place where there could be joy and happiness and celebration and then there could also be fear, um, trial, and whatever was going on with the emergency. Um, and he just talked a lot about um, that a lot of times our lives can be relatively smooth he says and but then the time will come for each of us when we will face unexpected challenges and I'm pretty sure we've all felt that um, there's kind of the cycle of life or, or just whatever is thrown our way that a lot of times things are um, smooth and just going great and then all of a sudden something will happen that kind of knocks us to our knees a little bit and forces us to kind of be humble or whatever um, hopefully we learn from those times instead of um, you know being angry or you know taking it the wrong way um, I just feel like you know we can always learn from our our mistakes learn from the trials learn from um, the way other people treat us and and you know how we always teach our kids that if they get in a fight especially you know my little girls I've got a 10 year old and a five-year-old and if one hits the other one, the other one is going to hit him back. And we try to teach them, does it matter if you got hit by somebody, you don't hit them back. You don't do the same bad thing that they did to you. You, you want to treat them the way that they would want to be treated. And that kind of goes towards trials, you know. Or if, if someone has offended you, um, it's not, I mean, I don't know what I was trying to say, but... Um, it, we shouldn't try to offend them back or or talk badly about them to other people or just whatever. Just don't resort to um, that kind of level. Try to be the the bigger man, as they say, or the bigger person, and do the right thing. And a lot of times you'll be shocked if, if you don't kind of put your defenses up and strike back that it might have a, a lasting impact on that other person. Um, so I thought that was a very good um, explanation or, or experience that he had. Um, 
we're often filled with feelings of despair or fear, which that fits with kind of the way our nation is right now. We kind of don't know really what's going on or when it's going to end. Um, but Russell M. Nelson said um, in May, it was an Enzyme article in May of 2014, he said, faith is the antidote to fear, it, or antidote for fear. Um, and I, that's, that's very true. Um, if you have faith that things will be okay, um, then they either will or at least you won't be frightened or be in a pit of despair. And I think that's been a pretty um, big thing in my life that I've, I've told a couple people that, you know, I've struggled with um, depression and anxiety here and there. And I think the big difference between myself and maybe another person going through that is that I've never lost the hope that things will get better. And I think that's a huge difference from me versus someone else who doesn't have hope, doesn't have faith that things will get better. And, you know, when you have hope that things will get better, um, your outcome or your willingness to change or willingness to make things better is, is so much, it's so much easier. Um, if you're kind of just without hope, without um, believing that there's a way out, um, people can make some pretty poor decisions when they're in that state of mind. So I thought that was a great uh, quote from Brother Nelson. Um, there was also a quote by Elder Robert D. Hales from an Enzyme article in 1983 that I really liked. Um, he said, Suffering is universal. How we react to suffering is individual. Suffering can take us one of two ways. It can be a strengthening and purifying experience combined with faith or it can be a destructive force in our lives if we do not have the faith in the Lord's atoning sacrifice. So that kind of goes with, with what I just said. Um, suffering can take us in two different directions. We can learn from it, we can purify ourselves, or we can let it be extremely destructive um, in our lives and also with others. We can bring people down. So I think that, that was a really good um, quote there. And so... Uh, the speaker of this talk also brought up the scriptures um, where Christ is saying um, that he can take our yoke. Um, so he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, for ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the thing that kind of struck me as I was preparing this lesson um, that I hadn't really thought about before was that he doesn't take the yoke or the burden away completely. Um, he gives he gives his yoke and his burden to you. So um, I think a lot of the younger generations feel that they're entitled or um, they take a lot of the easy way outs. And, and a lot of people do it as well. It's not just the younger generation, it's just a little bit more widespread. But they, they like to take the easier way out or expect people to just rescue them or have things just given to them like they're entitled. And I thought this was a really cool way to look at it, that it's not having your trials completely taken away. It's just being a support and um, kind of basically like trading with, with our Heavenly Father or with um, Jesus Christ. Um, he'll, he'll give you his yoke and he'll give you his burden because um, <clears throat> he'll take kind of the brunt of what you're dealing with. Um, so I thought that was an interesting viewpoint on that that I had never um, thought about. Um, and then the last, one of the last things, um, talking about Peter and the scriptures, and he said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. And I think that's an interesting thought, too. I think we probably hear that a lot. Um, like, why is this happening to me? Um, you know, th those types of words that people use. And then he says, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. 
So it's basically saying <clears throat> you're also partaking in what Christ suffered for us and your joy and your glory will be as great as his was. Because if we had not gone through any trials, how could we know joy? Um, I think that's also a scripture. That that scripture I just read was in 1 Peter um, chapter 4, 12 through 3. So I just thought that was really great. Without trials and without um, going through the storms of life, we wouldn't be able to find refuge. We wouldn't be able to find the joy <coughs> that our Heavenly Father wants for us so badly. Um, Russell M. Nelson also said this, Saints can be happy under every circumstance when the focus of our lives is on God's plan of salvation and Jesus Christ and his gospel. We can feel joy regardless of what is happening or not happening in our lives. Joy comes from, from and because of him. He is the source of all joy. Um, and then the last um, scripture I want to um, share with you is in Alma. It's chapter 36, verse 3. <clears throat> and this is Alma testifying um, to his son Helaman. And he says, I do, I do know that what, so, whosoever, here I'll start over here. I do know that whosoever shall put their trust in God shall be supported in their trials and their troubles and their afflictions and shall be lifted up at the last day. <clears throat> so I think it's a really great thing to, um, learn how to find refuge in the storm. Um, that would be from relying on Jesus Christ, of course, but then also, you know, your loved ones, your spouse, your parents, your friends, whoever, your neighbors, um, your ministering sisters, your bishop, whoever, whoever that person might be. Um, it could even be a stranger, you know. <laughs> And they can support you. And it, and again, and it's not that they will take away your pain, take away your burden. It's that they will help you so that the burden is lighter and that you can get through it a lot easier. Um, <clears throat> he talks about the hymn, Be Still My Soul. And that's one of my favorite hymns. Um, and he quotes that hymn in uh -huh. his talk. And I'll just kind of read that. Um, he says, Be, be Still My Soul. The hour is hastening on, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow forgot, love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed, <clears throat> we shall meet at last. And I'll just end that by saying that I know um, these things are true, and that I have, and I, I'm sure all of us have found refuge from the storm or we probably wouldn't be here today or at least wouldn't be um, faithful members of, of this church that is such a blessing and I hope all is well and that if anyone needed anything that we would know who to go to um, you know even if you need somebody to talk to or need a roll of toilet paper hey you can call me up anytime um, I love you all. I've loved being in this ward, and I want to say thank you for this opportunity, and I hope you all have a wonderful week, and happy Memorial Day. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.